go ahead and call it to order and, and take roll and see if we've got a quorum. Okay. Um, Danette, can we take the roll? Do you want me to take roll? Sure. Please. Tommy Jewell. Present. Debbie Strong. Present. Diane Layden. Present. Debbie Dodge. Present. James Stewart. Here, ma'am. Joseph Lopez. Present. Michael Wismer. And I don't see him on the attendees. I see an admin and I'm not sure if that's him. Let me see. There's no picture available, so that's a little hard to tell. Oh, and in the chat, it's um, Elena Giacci, I guess, is trying to join and she's having some trouble connecting. I see her on the attendees list, mm -hmm. um, but she's not on the screen list. Um, well, she's not a panelist, though. No, no. no. But she just put it in the chat addressed to everyone. So uh, Madam Chair, if I might, uh, I, I know we have a, a fairly ambitious agenda. Um, and uh, I might suggest that we suspend. Uh, our typical business in as much as we have uh, invited candidates to make public comment, hear from those candidates and then resume with the uh, order of the day. Okay, and I think that makes sense. So we do have a quorum. Um, so the meeting, uh, do I need to get a second or just call the meeting to order based on having a quorum? I think you need to get a second and we need to agree. Okay. So I'll second. Okay. Um, then the meeting is wait, did it, did someone make the motion and then someone else second? Because I missed that. I so move. Okay. I, I, I think I made the motion, but I don't care. Uh, I'll oh, second. Okay. Okay, great. Then the meeting is called to order and sorry for the confusion. Um, all right, then the next um, meeting, the next item on the agenda is introduction of new board member Joseph Lopez of District 2. Um, but I guess maybe can, are we allowed to add um, James Stewart as well? Because um, I think the agenda was established before Mr. Stewart was added to the board. So I don't know if there's a prohibition. Against no, no, Madam Chair, you, you can welcome Mr. Stewart as well as, okay. as we have done. All right, thank you. Well, um, then I'd like to welcome again, um, both of our new board members, James Stewart and, um, and Joseph Lopez. And um, I guess we do have an ambitious agenda today, so we will move on. Um, and thank you both for, for um, volunteering to serve on this board. We really appreciate it. Um, okay, is somebody, Debbie Dodge, were you raising your hand? No. Ma Ma Madam Chair, uh, you, you'll recall my motion or uh, Dr. Layden's motion to suspend business and, and get to the- uh... Oh. No, I didn't. Sorry, I did not get that. So, um, all right. Do we have so? Do we have a second to that? Yes. Um, and let's suspend our regular business for now and move on to the uh, sheriff's office comment. Is that or are we moving on to the public comment? Uh, specifically, the sheriff uh, candidate comment under okay. uh, public comment. Okay, so that would be um, item six on the agenda. So do we have, um, and, the, and there is an issue as to one of the statements from one of the candidates, which I guess we can discuss when we're finished hearing from um, the candidates who are present. That, that's fine with the uh, maker of the motion. Uh, 
Madam Chair, let me suggest that we take a vote on suspending our regular business uh, to take up that issue. Okay. Do I hear a, a motion to do? You, you have the that? motion. All you have to do is call for the vote. Oh. Just, just okay. say those in favor, say aye. All in favor, aye. say aye. 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 All, all <clears throat> opposed? <clears throat> no, no one opposed. Okay, then that motion <clears throat> is passed and um, we can go on to our sheriff's candidate comments. Um, that, Danette, Madam Chair, yeah, yeah, I was going to, I don't know if Danette sent you the list of those who had signed up, but she I, and I had discussed taking uh, candidate comments in the order that they had signed up to speak. Okay. Reminding them that there is a two minute limit on, on presentations. Um, and, uh, that, uh, she and I be the timekeepers. Okay. And That's so not... obviously the net is controlling the zoom and has the ability to admit people to speak and stop them. She is going to give a 30 second warning. So when someone is at a minute and a half, she will, uh, so indicate, and uh, if they fail to wrap up uh, by two minutes or shortly thereafter, she is then authorized to stop them from speaking. That's what we had discussed, if that's your pleasure. Uh, yes, that I, I believe that is what we agreed to at our last meeting. And so that is how we should proceed. And, um, Jeanette, perhaps you can call the names of the speakers in the in the correct order that we've agreed to. Yes, um, I will do that. I'm also starting to promote all of them to panelists so that everybody could see them. Um, it's going to be the order is Derek Scott. I'm going to mess up Philip Snickerdiker's last name. Sorry, John Allen, Joshua James Lawrence, Rudy Mora, and Pat uh, Riuloba. So I am opening up for all those to become panelists now at the moment, um, so everyone can see them, but we will still stick with that order and um, we can call them up in that manner. All right, so you said that um, Derek Scott is the first speaker? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Scott, would you like to proceed? Do you have yeah. a statement? Thank you. Sure, Madam Chair. I really appreciate the opportunity here to speak. Um, just want to let you guys know before I start, um, two minutes is a short amount of time to really punch it all in. So I just want you guys to know that you can contact me anytime at my phone number or on my email, uh, Derek at BigDForSheriff.com, and we could have a further conversation. So to start, you know, I want you guys to know that I will listen and take suggestions under serious thought, and I will combine it with my experience to make an appropriate decision with this committee. Um, I've been in law enforcement ever since I was 17, and I joined when I was actually an explorer with the uh, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department in Colorado. I was a cadet. Worked my way up through there and actually worked in an internship with the detectives department. Then went on to become into the security department because again, it was an internship. So you gotta still pay the bills before you're 21 and ran a security company right before the age of 21. Uh, before, after that, I went to Evergreen Patrol and then in 2003 came down here to New Mexico. I applied for Sandoval County in 2004, became a uh, peace officer and reserve deputy. I ran and implemented a standard operating procedure for mass control and the new policies for the new wings of the jail. I was also asked to represent the officers and the deputies to be headed for the representation with administration. I also continued on working my way up to be peace officer and work into training firearms instruction, advanced weapons and tactics, became part of the CERT team, supervised officers and task forces, including gangs, which is categorizing, photographing, and dealing with gang activity. 
Um, I was unfortunately medically retired because of my because of my MS and worked with the MS Society, bringing awareness to disability and gun rights for people with disabilities. I was honored in the state, uh, New Mexico State, and the lieutenant governor by the lieutenant governor and, and the state senate for my work on disability rights, including lobbying. The thing that we have as sh me running for sheriff and my team that I've collected, I've spent a year really thinking about how we're going to do this. And we have a plan that is a four point plan. The first part of that plan is the reserve deputy program, which already exists with BCSO. Might need a little bit of adjustment, but we want to bring in volunteers and retired or uh, people that are maybe coming in from a state that don't have their full certification. We can put them through a quicker academy and get them into the administration area to get the full time deputies out on the streets. We I'm also want. Pardon me, uh, Mr. Scott. I'm, I'm showing time, but please go ahead and sum up in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, just I have a four point plan. Go to bigdforsheriff.com. I think you guys will really find it interesting. We, we have a really, really good plan on how to deal with next year's crime because it's going to skyrocket, but we have a plan on how to bring it back down. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And, and Danette, are, are you announcing a minute, 30 seconds? I can if you would like me to. <laughs> we would like you to. Okay. All right, I guess we can move on to our next speaker, um, Danette. Um, that would be Philip, and he can correct me on his last name pronunciation. Madam Chair and uh, esteemed members of the uh, commission, uh, my name is Phil Snedeker. It's Snedeker. Uh, I'm a candidate for Bernalillo County Sheriff, and uh, I'll be very brief and to the point. I uh, have a 47-year career uh, and 47 years of experience as a law enforcement officer, professional, and administrator. Uh, I grew up in Silver City, New Mexico. I attended Western New Mexico University. I obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in social science from that institution, a Master of Arts degree in educational administration from that institution. While I was attending college, completing my formal education, I worked for the uh, Municipal Police Department in Silver City for a four-year period. Uh, upon completing my formal education, I was employed for a 10-year period by the New Mexico State Police Department. I was uh, assigned to Santa Fe initially, subsequently Farmington, uh, subsequently Tucumcari, New Mexico. While in Tucumcari, New Mexico, I was elected as the Democratic Sheriff of Quay County. I completed my terms of office there. I came to Albuquerque in 1991. I've served the last 32 years as an administrator for the State Probation and Parole Division, working directly at the district court with our district court judges on the criminal side, the criminal division. You now have uh, a minute 30 on the clock. I uh, am very interested uh, as a member of this community, as a uh, individual that has dedicated his professional and adult life to the interest and service of the public of continuing with that. We have a crime crisis here in Bernalillo County. Uh, I, as a prepared and pro professionally trained administrator with over 32 years of experience, Two uh, supervising, supervising uh, up to 200 people, uh, as a former elected sheriff, as a former state police officer, as a former municipal police officer, uh, someone uh, uh, who uh, is professionally prepared, professionally educated, I'm ready to move this county, this city, this uh, community uh, to greatness. Uh, we're prepared to address these uh, crime problems uh, strict, uh, very purposeful enforcement activities will be a part of our agenda, coupled with efforts. Coming on three minutes, uh, Mr. Stilliker. I, I don't want to cut coupled, you off, but but uh, you got over time. Coupled with Thank efforts. You. 
coupled with efforts to rehabilitate people, address mental health issues, address underlying root causes of crime will be an additional part of our agenda. We want to work cooperatively with all agencies. We want to work with our schools, our churches, our community. We believe in constitutionally sound policing, body cameras. Uh, we believe in uh, uh, working diligently to get illegal farms off the street. And I would uh, uh, certainly embrace and uh, give my full attention to working cooperatively and collaboratively with your commission, your committee, and, and I applaud your efforts. And uh, you will always have open and direct communication with me. And I know we're working together for the betterment of this community. Thank you for allowing me to speak here. Thank you, sir. Danette, You're will welcome. You, will you cut his mic, please? Yes. Okay, so we allowed him to go over. Let's, let's control the time a little better. Danette, uh, if, if I give you the indication, uh, we'll cut people off. It, it's unfair to others if we allow uh, any individual candidate to, to go over. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm trying to be very flexible. I understand that two minutes is difficult to comply with, but we want this commission and the public in attendance to have the opportunity to hear from everybody. And so it is imperative that we control the time. I'm, I'm sure uh, as a sheriff, uh, you will encounter circumstances where you have time limits. And so uh, please be cognizant of our two minute limit and do your best to comply. Uh, Danette, will you call the next person, please? Yes, it's gonna be Mr. Uh, John Allen. Uh, hello, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having all of us here. Uh, it's an honor to speak with all of you. Again, my name is John Allen, started my career in 1997 with the New Mexico State Police, and then I lateral to the Burnley County Sheriff's Department here in 2001. I worked in uh, various areas in the department, being homicide, violent crimes, special weapons, and tactics. I'm also one of the few uh, master use of force instructors in the state, uh, which deals with civil rights and excessive force and also trains all of our department personnel within the constitutional rights and also taking people into custody properly. Uh, then I became a supervisor over all of those units uh, with special weapons and tactics, violent crimes, homicide. And one of my big platforms is mental and behavioral health uh, to where we put a clinician uh, with uniform deputy so we can respond to our mental health calls appropriately. Um, a couple of things. Uh, one, we need to do, we have a crime crisis and so many other issues and we have to have a multifaceted approach uh, within the Bernalillo County to also help the city of Albuquerque, which is encompassed within our county. And that's restoring uh, public trust, is which all of you are trying to do, and make sure that we have transparency in our department, which is very important. Also focus in data-driven policing, not only for the crime crisis, but to make sure to where we address the root causes, but also where the problems are, not just in the county and the city, uh, but how we address them correctly and also look at a health-based approach such as social workers, clinicians, and other people uh, that are outside of law enforcement to make sure that we're understanding everybody's issues. Also improve relationships, which I already have. Uh, we have to work with the Albuquerque 30, Police Department. 30 seconds. And we have to advocate for collaboration, not just with the Albuquerque Police Department, uh, but build bridges back with uh, the district attorney's office, surrounding counties, and so many others. Uh, that way we succeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Allen. And, and Madam Chair, it's not my intention to step all over your toes, but I think we need to control this tightly. And, and so I appreciate you letting me step back in. Um, thank you. Sure. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, Danette, will you call the next uh, speaker, please? Uh, Joshua James Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Can y'all see me and hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Please go ahead. Hello, I am Joshua James Ryan Lawrence. Um, I do live in Albuquerque, New Mexico and have for since about 2022. Um, I have never worked in law enforcement of any kind in New Mexico. Um, I have been an activist for a very long time on both sides of the aisle. And um, 
I've been teaching the Constitution for many years now. Uh, been traveling the country, teaching uh, counties how to become du jour, how to be constitutional, teaching sheriffs, county commissioners, county clerks, etc., how to properly constitutionally do their uh, fulfill their duty and their role. Um, so my plan is to uh, make Bernalillo County a constitutional county. Uh, we will be uh, opening up a full um, audit of the sheriff's department, as well as taking over the Albuquerque Police Department, and as well opening up a full forensic audit, financial audit of the APD. Uh, as well, we will be deputizing our veterans, as all veterans are guaranteed a job in law enforcement under our constitution. Uh, we will also be using our vets to deputize the public in what's called the People's Posse. A minute 30 uh, is passed. So in turn, we will uh, have the largest sheriff's department in the country uh, ever for anywhere in our country. Uh, the people of the community love and support their community more than anybody. And uh, I believe that we can police it better than the departments that are uh, right now um, here being that we are the worst county uh, in the country as far as all our statistics and just about everything. So um, I plan on bringing the constitution back, putting the power of the people back in the people's hands. It's been a very, very, very long time since that, since that has happened. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James. Annette, call our next speaker, please. It'll be Rudy Mora. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for allowing me. My name is uh, Rudy Mora. Uh, I'm a candidate for Bernalillo County Sheriff. Uh, I started off my career with the New Mexico State Police, um, and was in patrol uh, investigations, did undercover work, and uh, finished within the special operations in the canine unit. Uh, while with the New Mexico State Police, I was instrumental in creating and uh, developing racial profiling policy and for the New Mexico State Police. In 2012, I retired and went on to become a, a task force officer with the Drug Enforcement Administration and uh, did that uh, very happily, keeping the, our trains and buses safe of drugs and, and uh, illegal weapons. I went on to be the undersheriff of Bernalillo County for five years, so I understand the entire uh, institutional workings of the Bernalillo County uh, was there when they switched to the home run rule. Uh, I understand the procurement process. Um, and then in 2019, I retired and went off to be the uh, chief of police for the Pueblo Laguna. Uh, <clears throat> I believe in uh, community policing. Recently, I sat on uh, Pepperdine University's uh, police reform panel. I've also sat on missing indigenous women uh, here in New Mexico uh, on that panel through the BIA. Uh, I hold a bachelor's degree in organizational leadership. I've been to Northwestern Police Staff and Command. I've been to Louisville uh, Police Executive Leadership course. Uh, I believe in a learning organization. I believe in collaboration. 30 and, seconds left. Thank you. And most importantly, I believe in, in serving the people. I'm a public servant uh, my entire life. I've been uh, preparing for this uh, endeavor my entire life. And I'm looking forward to becoming uh, the next Bernalillo County Sheriff and working with everyone to, combat, to combat uh, the violent crime that's happening in our community. We can do this together if we all work together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mora. Donette, would you call our next speaker, please? Uh, Pat uh, Rioloba. Thank you, Danette. Uh, Madam Chair, board members, thank you for the opportunity to be in front of you today. Um, my name is Pat Riloba, and uh, I, I have 30 years of law enforcement experience. Uh, I graduated from Rio Grande High School. Uh, I, I, I'm born and raised in the South Valley, and I'm raising my kids here, one of the very few candidates who are from the incorporated area. And that's really important because of the sense of community and connection. Um, I went into law enforcement because I cared about my community. Uh, and I'm choosing to run for this uh, position because I care about law enforcement. 
during my time in the in, in the police department, I worked in narcotics, violent crimes, the gang unit, criminal intelligence unit, highway interdiction. And one of my most proudest uh, positions in my 30 year law enforcement career was a school resource officer. At this time, I implemented restorative practices that created a, a, a really roadblock in our school to jail pipeline that manifested into reducing suspensions and expulsions as with our students. As we see right now, uh, we have a lot of juvenile crime and in many of those situations, those young people are not in school. So having that awareness and understanding of how to work with school districts to keep our kids in school is gonna be instrumental in changing the culture of crime. Uh, we gotta quit responding and look for proactive ways uh, that are going to reduce crime and respond to the crime that is directly affecting our community. It's really important that the next sheriff uh, is, is a leader, not only within the department, but within the community. When I retired from the Albuquerque Police Department, I became a legislator representing my district in Santa Fe and created a lot of changes that not only supported law enforcement through training and equipment, but also capital outlay So it's really important that the leader not only represents the department to ensure that the deputies and staff have what they need to be successful, but also direct connections with the community. It's the community that's gonna make the department the department that should serve the community in the way they expect. So thank you for the opportunity to speak to all of you. I'm very grateful and thank you Lynette for organizing this. You did such a great job. We can thank Floyd. Floyd got it going. Thank you, Floyd. Thank you both. Lynette, call our next speaker, please. Um, we are done with the speakers that signed up for candidates. We have a public speaker, James Fazer Page. But, but before we uh, move into that, let me just say that uh, the board is, is aware that under Sheriff Kern is uh, present uh, and that he is a candidate. Uh, the board, uh, I think, discussed previously the conflictual circumstance with hearing from him while he is in his uh, official capacity with the sheriff's office. And he has indulged that and elected not to take time off and speak to us. Uh, in, in lieu, he did submit a video uh, in consultation with our legal counsel. I have determined that it would be inappropriate for us to show that during this uh, portion of, of the meeting. Certainly there has, has been some uh, internet traffic from, from the board on that subject and, and we might take that up later, Madam Chair, but for the immediate, I think it inappropriate for us to show uh, that. Uh, and I, I don't know, but uh, under Sheriff Kern may, may be addressing the board in his capacity as under sheriff at that portion of the agenda. And so having uh, given voice to that, uh, Madam Chair, I, I'd, uh, as Danette suggests, uh, uh, suggest that we move on then to public comment. Um, that, that seems fine to me. Um, so why don't we move on to public comment? Danette, if you would call out the names of the people who have signed up to speak. I have a James Fazer uh, Page. And before Mr. Page speaks, uh, Madam Chair, let, let me just uh, say this, that uh, those of you uh, who are giving public comment in favor of a candidate, that this is, we are an apolitical body. And so uh, I, uh, as, chair of this board uh, will exercise a prerogative to cut off political speech. So please be cognizant of that. Mr. Fraser. Has he been elevated, Danette? Yes, he is showing on the panelists. Uh, he just removed his mute, so he is uh, good to speak. Mr. Fraser Page. Per 
perhaps he's having some technical difficulty and and will uh, be in a position to speak to us later. Uh, are there others to speak to us, uh, Danette? I had signed up, uh, Mr. Uh, Barnett was signed up, but I don't see him on the attendees list. So I believe he's not present. Okay, Mr. Barnett, if uh, you are present, please uh, give us an indication that you're here and desire to speak. Hearing nothing, Danette, are there others? Mm, on the attendees list, I have just uh, regular people that uh, attend the meeting, um, Floyd, um, Daniel, Ken, um, I have a James Powell from Albuquerque. I'm not sure what he's here for. He's allowed to talk. Mr. Powell, any comment from you, sir? No, I, um, I'm an observer. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, Elena Giacci, who is present at some of our meetings. She's on talking right now. Elena, do you have something to say? No, it was just, uh, <clears throat> I didn't know whether or not we were allowed to do a general question for the candidates or not. Well, I'm going to remind, and, and Elena, I know you were uh, a part of the conversation previously when the board uh, voted to allot this time uh, for these candidate presentations. You know, we walk a very tight line. This is not a political uh, body. And uh, so these candidates have uh, volunteered to give public comment in, in much the way that the rest of the public uh, is allowed to with a two minute limitation. And, and so, no, we're not, this is not a debate. This is not a question and answer period. Uh, we would love to plan for that. And as you know, uh, we, we did discuss how we might get further into this, uh, but this isn't the meeting for it. So uh, no, we'll, we'll not uh, entertain questioning of the, of the candidates. Any, anything else? Danette, is, is Let's that see. the attendees that I have are uh, KRQE News 13 is in attendance, and then I have an M. Anderson. Not sure what they're what the M. Anderson is here for. Okay. Well, I think we've gotten through the candidate uh, portion, Madam Chair, and I would suggest that we return to the order of the day. All right. And, and would so move. All right, do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, um, then the motion is passed. Um, and so we will return to the um, approval of the minutes for the April 8th meeting. I'll so move, a... Madam Chair. All right, do I hear a second? I'll second. Oh. All right, that motion is passed. Um, you need a right. vote on it, Madam Chair. Oops. All right, <laughs> thank you. Um, is all in favor? Aye. Aye. And all opposed? Aye. I don't see no one opposed. That motion is passed. Okay, the minutes are approved from the last meeting. And now we'll move on to um, item five, which is the sheriff's office comment. And I believe that under sheriff, Corin is is here as a representative of BCSO, and in that capacity only. Um, so I don't know, Under Sheriff, if you um, have any comments you would like to make um, as a representative of BCSO. Hi, Board uh, uh, Vice Chair. Chair, um, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you uh, recognizing my uh, my recusing myself from the, the early portion of this meeting, but uh, I am here. I don't have any any comments at this time. Okay. Um, in that case, 
we will, is there any other representative of the sheriff's office here that wanted to make a statement? I don't believe so. All right, then um, we move on to um, item seven in the agenda, uh, which is old business. And the first item there is discussion of the annual report draft or outline um, that was sent out a couple of weeks ago and a revision adding um, our newest member, Mr. Stewart, to the list of SORB members was sent out just today. Um, so if anybody has any comments they would like to make now on, on it, um, please feel free to do so. Ma Madam Chair, uh, yes. I, I, uh, if I might be heard just briefly, uh, wanted to thank you for keeping us on track. And uh, I, I know uh, you did yeoman's work in uh, shepherding this effort uh, prior to uh, reporting to the county commission as we did in January and suspect and hope that, that you will do the same with this. And so if you would just speak about how you, how you and when you would like to receive input. And, and certainly as you have indicated, we welcome uh, our, our newest board members to, to give input as well. Uh, that, that's all I have to say at this time, thanks. Okay, did, did anyone else wanna make any comments? I know our newest board members probably haven't had a chance even to really go through this at all. Um, but doesn't, um, Diane Layden, did you have your hand up? Yes, I, I just want to thank you for the wonderful work you did last year and that you're doing this year on the annual report. That's very helpful. Well, thank you. But I look at the annual report as a totally cooperative effort that everybody is encouraged to join in. And now that we've had the experience of doing one annual report, everyone should feel even more comfortable to jump in. So if there are topics that you brought up or subcommittees you were on, um, I would appreciate, you know, at, at least, um, you know, some sort of a draft uh, of, of what you would like to see in the annual report concerning those issues. I, I you know, try to remember everything and, and have that in the outline form, but if there's anything else, anytime, please, email me, call me, you know, contact me. Um, what you can't do is, is send an email to more than, um, I, I guess we're, we're still very limited as to uh, by the Public Meetings Act. And so we, we can't have an off the record meeting of more than, I guess at this point it's more than three so the best thing is just to send the comment to me and then, um, and, and Chair Jewell, who is also working with me on this. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, because this really is supposed to be a joint effort and I've already put in a few places of assigning people to fill in things, um, which you'll see in the report that's highlighted. So that being said, um, are there any other comments? Okay, and by the way, I would encourage you not just to have sub substantive comments, but if you see a typo, don't assume I'm going to see it and correct it because it's just not a good assumption to make. All right, um, no other comments on that. Um, then we move on to item, item uh, B under old business, and that's further discussion on a forum for sheriff's candidates following the primary elections. And I have Floyd Vasquez um, as the person to speak on that topic. Madam Chair, Madam members, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am not able to envision the circumstances which would provide for a SORB produced forum for sheriff's candidates following the primary election. Local media outlets are ramping up election coverage, and it's unknown if one or more will produce a debate or another type of forum uh, for the Burnco Sheriff's race. It is possible, but there are other higher profile statewide races. 
another option may be for a neighborhood association or other community group to organize a forum. Uh, we can certainly ask the Bernalillo County Neighborhood Association Coordinator to mention to contacts if the SORB would like to encourage such an event. Uh, and board members and anyone viewing this meeting who knows of a community group that hosts candidate forums consider suggesting a Burn Co. Sheriff's Forum. Uh, such groups in the unincorporated areas of the counties would seem to be prime candidates for that. And in the South Valley, East Mountains, North Valley, and the area around North Albuquerque air, air, acres. Uh, the board might also consider highlighting any nonpartisan candidate information we find, such as the voter's guide published by the League of Women Voters. Uh, the method for that might be to put the resource on the agenda for review, and if it meets the board's requirement for being both informative and nonpartisan, uh, the, board, the board might vote to recommend it to the public's attention, and we could link the resource from the SORB homepage. And uh, finally, after the primary, the board might consider continuing to allow candidates for sheriff to sign up and make public comment if they want to, uh, one or more meetings. Uh, that's all I have, and uh, of course, happy to answer any questions. Um, I have a question, Floyd, which is, um, what if we were to reach out to an organization such as the League of Women Voters, that's a specifically non partisan organization and post them um, to have a forum of candidates, sheriff's candidates after the primary. Would that, and, and I'm also addressing this to our legal counsel who are present, um, would that be feasible? Because that would not end up being a debate so much as um, the formats that I have seen in the past are just um, that people are allowed to submit questions in advance and then um, a representative of the League of Women Voters poses those questions to the candidates but there's no back and forth and there's no um, immediate Q&A. Uh, would that be feasible? And, and Madam Chair, before he answers, I didn't quite understand the context of that. You, uh, Your suggestion is that we contact the League of Women Voters to post a form for uh, sheriff's candidates, is that correct? Well, but it would be under our auspices. So it would be offered through one of the SORB meetings, uh, but it would be actually run by the League of Women Voters. And, and so, certainly we should hear from, from a legal counsel on that, Madam Chair, because I think if, if we use this platform if we use this form mm -hmm. uh, for political purposes, then that's problematic. So right. I, I appreciate, and, and uh, you know, maybe I'm going beyond here. I appreciate the effort of your committee. Uh, Floyd just did a great job in making sure uh, that there were opportunities to publicize um, what we did today in this meeting. And I think what we did today in this meeting was, was truly educational. I see Daniel's hand and would remind us that we walked quite the tightrope and, and some of you in, indeed may still have lingering feelings. Poor uh, under Chef Corrin didn't get the opportunity as, as he envisioned through his video to present, but it was problematic. And, and so I, I, as chair, have an obligation to, uh, to lead this group past troubled waters and, and it was trouble, there was trouble in us showing that video. So uh, if, if, if we might, um, Madam Chair, let's hear from Daniel and, and, and revisit uh, your question with that information. And I, and I appreciate the, the um, you know, it, it sounds to me like uh, Vice Chair or Chair, Acting Chair today, um, uh, Ms. Strongin is encouraging voters to get educated, which is always, uh, is, You're cutting out on us, Daniel. There we go. I apologize. I was being uh, rerouted and it kicked me off and booted me back on. Um, it sounds to me like uh, Chair uh, Strongin wants to encourage the public to, to get educated about the candidates, which in and of itself, promoting that um, from the county, that's fine. Um, th the problem, as uh, uh, Chair Jewell stated, is that if we use the county resources, which would be the 
for example, Danette, if she ran it, um, she's a county employee working on county time, all of that becomes politically sanctioned activity. Um, we, the board could encourage the League of Women Voters to run this on their own. There'd be no problem with that, I see. It's when the county resources start going into it that we start running into the legalities of the issue and not just for the counties, um, you know, possibly for the candidates as well. Um, and, and that's, I'm only advising it just to protect kind of everyone. Oh, and, and I certainly appreciate that advice. And um, I guess we can just reach out then as a board if people agree that we should do that to an organization such as League of Women Voters because it is a, a party neutral organization and suggest that this would be a, a, of benefit to the public. And um, it, it was raised, uh, the issue of having some sort of debate or post primary forum was raised by, I believe, Elena Giacci at um, one of our past meetings, um, speaking as a member of the public. So I, I think it would be good if we could encourage other nonpartisan organizations, because I'm assuming you know, other forums I've seen are, you know, it's all the Republican candidates are all the Democratic candidates. And I don't think that we can um, be neutral and, and um, urge either of, you know, those type of organizations to, would, to hold forums. So I think it would have to be reaching out to neutral organizations. I, I agree, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, would so move. I uh, would probably go beyond uh, merely contacting the League of Women Voters and uh, say that we uh, prob probably ought to uh, generally inquire about groups who might publicize the uh, election for the office of sheriff. Having run myself as a candidate for judge uh, a number of times, I can tell you that it is difficult uh, with, with the races on, on the higher level of the ticket, getting all the, the paid publicity in as well as the attention to bring um, attention to a low information, low visibility race like sheriff and um, then in times of crisis, we, we tend to wonder, well, what were we thinking as a public when we elected X or uh, when we elected Y? And, and so I think it our obligation then to make sure that, that there is some attention given to uh, the race for share. And, and so in, in that context, I endorse your effort if, if through your committee uh, on behalf of the SORB or otherwise uh, for us to bring attention to the need for the public to be uh, educated and involved uh, with respect to this election. I mean, I mean we've heard uh, enough that uh, the sheriff um, is elected by the people and reports to the people. And so we need to energize the people to make sure that, that, that they fulfill the public responsibility of making sure we have the best candidate that we can get. Sorry to go on. I, I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have suggestions or comments on this issue? All right. Um, so I guess, do we need to take a vote on, on whether to proceed in the manner we've just discussed? Certainly couldn't hurt, Madam Chair. And, and All right. as, as I said, it it can read as a, a motion from me. And so perhaps you want to get a second and then we'll vote. All right. Any, anyone want a second? I'll second. All right. We have a second. So that motion is passed. Make sure you have the vote there, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. All in Those favor? Those in favor, say aye. Say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All opposed? I don't see anybody opposed, so that motion is passed. All right, um, moving on to, uh, I believe the next item would be new business. And 
Um, that's the review of the updates to um, the code of conduct that Michael Wismer prepared, but I don't believe that Michael Wismer has been able to join our meeting. Danette, has, is he, is Michael with us today? Danette, you're on mute. Sorry, I have a phone number and I can't make out who it is. There's no name or anything attached to it. So I don't know if it's him or not. Um, Mr. Whistler, if you're there, please identify yourself. He can send it through chat maybe. Um, I could try texting. Yeah, I, I'm going to assume that he's not here, Madam Chair, and, and ask that we move on. If he surfaces, we can retake his matter. I agree, and I, I would suggest that we reserve that that item for, uh, for the next meeting. Um, all right, I, I think at this point, um, unless anybody has any other specific items to bring up, I I know that Diane Layden wants to suggest a topic for the agenda for the next meeting. Hello. Uh, in April, an article appeared in the Albuquerque Journal that reported a shooting uh, by a deputy of a resident um, that meant the article mentioned that the video of the incident had been edited by the sheriff's department. A reason was given uh, that said that they didn't want uh, viewers to see the police procedures used in stopping this uh, alleged perpetrator. Um, they didn't want to show that. So they edited the video. Uh, other parts of the video were made available. I was struck by the comment by the reporter, Matthew Risen. He is one of two. He and Elise Kaplan are the main two reporters who cover crime. So I'm assuming he's knowledgeable. He said that not releasing the full video of the incident, as is the custom for other agencies, um, is unusual. Uh, other agencies, he contends, uh, release their full videos. Um, my concern is I, I would like the sheriff's office to comment on this practice. And also, I would like to know if the full video of the incident, not the edited video, is preserved. Uh, we all know that after these police shootings, there are often lawsuits and uh, the people who file those suits will want access to full information. Also, we should all have that for our own, our own review. Uh, a full review by the sheriff's office and, and other people who have a legitimate interest. So Jeanette sent you a message with a link to the journal article. If you don't have an Albuquerque Journal subscription, she'll send you a copy of the article. I will as well. And I'm hoping we can discuss this at our June meeting. Thank you. Um. All right, does anybody else um, have any? Oh, uh, Danette, I wanted to make sure that the email that um, Diane sent out uh, with that article also goes to under Sheriff Corrin as a representative of the office so that they have an opportunity to review this before they're asked to comment on it at the next meeting. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other topics that people would suggest for the next meeting? Anybody? Uh, I'm not. Yes. Madam Chair, I, uh, I think I interrupted perhaps as Mr. Lopez or uh, perhaps even Mr. Stewart were, were going to give uh, some introductory remarks. Uh, so if not, at this meeting, uh, certainly we need to put on the agenda at our next meeting that, that they uh, be permitted to give uh, extensive uh, uh, 
comment uh, about who they are and what, what they hope to accomplish in, in this position. And uh, I, I certainly don't want to put them on the spot, but uh, I've had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Lopez and I had the opportunity to see uh, the, the uh, background materials on, on Mr. Stewart. Uh, both are very impressive individuals and uh, capable of adding a lot uh, to these proceedings. And, and uh, again, I welcome them, but want them uh, to have the opportunity to speak un uninterrupted by me. That sounds like an excellent idea. Um, any other comments or suggestions for next meeting's agenda? And I think we should explain for our new members that it is possible if you think of something after this meeting, and it's, I believe, within, you, we have to get that to Danette within seven days of the next meeting, uh, but it can be added to the agenda. It doesn't have to be done right now. It has to be done in time for to appear in the next agenda, which Danette, is that, that agenda must be published, is it seven days or five days before the next meeting? It's like 96 hours, so I usually do it seven days prior. Okay. Be safe. So just so that information is, is out there to everyone. And all right, anything else? Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, it, it, it strikes me that I probably have, have an obligation to elucidate on, on uh, my activities as chair. I did mention uh, that, that I made uh, a couple of uh, TV appearances and, and indeed a radio appearance in aid of our uh, candidate comment uh, in today's meeting. Uh, I certainly want to thank Floyd. Uh, he uh, really goes above and beyond in making sure that, that we uh, are able to have access to publicity. And, and so I don't know if anybody got to see those spots. Uh, I did my best, you all. Uh, and and uh, I, I uh, you know, uh, I, I think others probably uh, can address the public better, but uh, I will continue to do so as as long as you all uh, are pleased with that effort. Um, I think uh, also I wanted to say, and and Madam Chair, you mentioned um, empowering the League of Women Voters. But is there anything else that we envision doing uh, with respect to, uh, we, we said that we would look at doing something after the primary. Uh, is, is that something we want to take up or in, uh, in light of uh, Daniel's address, and, and, and I'm sure this is uh, like a baby for Daniel, he probably loses sleep every time, you know, we, we open our mouths, but uh, is, is there anything else that we envision uh, that, that we want to do in aid of this election? Are we done with that? Or, and maybe we need to put that on the next agenda. I think it should go on the next agenda. Um, I, you know, I think we're, we're fairly limited in what we can do. And so we have to be very mindful of that. Um, I also think, you know, maybe we should talk about, and, and this would be, you know, in the future, but the whole issue of, you know, if a, a candidate for sheriff is also with the sheriff's department and as part of his job is attending SORB meetings representing BCSO, that person is precluded from addressing the meeting unless he or she doesn't, um, you know, takes personal time from work. And it's just a very awkward position for anyone to be in. And so our, you know, in, in the future, we need to be mindful of that, um, that restriction and try to find some way to provide everybody running an opportunity to be heard. And, and I can see that we're gonna give Daniel a heart attack. 
let me just say that it, it you know, it, it wasn't lost on us, and Daniel included, that that dilemma was present for under Sheriff Corrin. Uh, you know, I will say that I had conversation with uh, Daniel. Uh, he was able to uh, spoon feed me on, on his research and his effort collegially uh, to, to assess uh, what, what would be the best position for this board to take. Uh, I, I, I hope he's satisfied that we navigated this in a way that uh, didn't compromise under Sheriff Corn nor uh, do any damage uh, to the county commission because we sit essentially uh, as the county commission as we do this work. Uh, and, and so uh, I hope we navigated through that. And, and certainly I'm not adverse if, the, if there are better ways to do it, uh, to, to hearing that, but I don't want anybody to have the impression that, that we sit, sat back and did nothing uh, in, in the dilemma that Sheriff, uh, under Sheriff Corn uh, was, was uh, placed in. Um, and, and so I want, I want you all to appreciate that, that at the 11th hour, uh, that there were discussions and legal research that was going on. And, you know, under Sheriff Curran may have, have some suggestions uh, as, as a result of him being placed in that dilemma. I don't know if it's appropriate for him to share suggestions, but he's, he's still present with us. Uh, and, and so he's, he's got that very nice video out there and, and he can do privately with it, uh, probably more than we can do publicly with it. So, uh, you know, he's, he's free to figure out how he might utilize that going forward. Thank you, Chair. I, I have no, no comment. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other suggestions for next meeting's agenda? Uh, <clears throat> all right, then um, I guess we have decided that we'll, our next meeting will be Friday, June 10th at 11. Oh, I see that we also um, have under here, here the resignation of um, Diane Dosal is on the uh, agenda under item number nine. So um, I'm sure that we all wish her well in, in becoming president of this um, National Association on Mental, mental Illness. Um, National working Association for the Mentally Ill. Mm -hmm. Nami. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, I know that working in that area the, is one of, it has been her, her passion for many years. And so I think her, her appointment to that for that um, association, which is a full-time position is, um, is something she's very well suited for. Um, and that being yeah, said, Madam Chair, yes. I think I think that was ably said uh, on behalf of the SORB, and I, I hope uh, I don't know if she's perhaps in attendance today. I, I guess not, but uh, you know cer certainly I hope those comments uh, uh, will be given to her, and uh, that that she might address us in her new capacity uh, when it becomes appropriate. So, um, and I always have concern as I've discussed with you, Madam Vice Chair that uh, this work get, gets a bit restrictive for people. Uh, this is also in connection with, with our next meeting. We have only met virtually and, and certainly looked forward to a meeting in person, uh, but to have a hybrid meeting, both in person and through Zoom or some other uh, transmission vehicle um, doesn't appear in the offing, and, and so it looks like, and Danette has been looking for us, that, that's another conversation. She's been trying to find an appropriate uh, facility where we might uh, telecast and, and meet in person, uh, but, but there doesn't seem to be anything immediately uh, com coming into view. So I suspect that we will continue to have these virtual meetings, um, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Lopez and, and Stewart, uh, in, in light of that, please know that uh, we have had occasion to have, have a social Zoom every uh, now and then, um, and that uh, I, I believe it is on at least our radar screen to have uh, some meetings that aren't at 11 o'clock on Friday, uh, perhaps the weekend or the evening, so that, that we might give the public a better opportunity to participate. Um, but uh, it, it, I think, does pose a challenge for us to continue to meet virtually uh, and, and not know each other better. Uh, at the same time, it appears uh, the, the best way to continue going into the, the uh, near future. I agree with that. Okay. Um, you know, I just thought of a possible agenda item for next meeting also is that uh, you know, one, of the, um, one of the tasks that we as a board are mandated to do under the ordinance is to review this um, standard operating procedures of BCSO. And I was working on that committee along, subcommittee, along with Diane Dosal, who had extensive law enforcement experience. Um, now that she's not involved in that review, um, I'd just like people to consider if anyone, particularly maybe our new members who have substantial law enforcement experience, um, would care to assist in that effort. So don't need any answers now, but I, I, I just like to raise that as a- And Mr. Uh, Mr. Stewart, that, that might be aimed at you. We know we, <laughs> you have that in your background. We don't know that it's uh, an interest of yours though, but if, if it is, uh, please know that we welcome you to that. Uh, and, and both you and Mr. Lopez, please uh, feel free to take us into areas that you think uh, we, we need to delve into. So. Please don't be shy about expressing yourselves. Um, uh, you know, it's right now, you know, I'm hoping it's appropriate, but yeah, I have extensive background in developing policy. Uh, the sheriff's office where I took over as chief nine years ago, the policies were uh, made me a graft and whoever you talk to would have their own three ring binder and they might or might not be the same policy. So we got them all standardized, all on the web and uh, made it substantial progress. And yeah, I'd be very much interested in helping with that. Great, <laughs> that's well, great. Well, Debbie, will you reach out to him and, and kind of uh, let him know where that effort is? Absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, and I am now making you the head of that subcommittee. Mr. Stewart. <laughs> well, you don't have me to blame for that. Um, Mr. Lopez, are there any particular interests that, that you might have and want to express? Uh, thank you, Chair Jewell. The, uh, the video redaction that uh, BCSO handed out um, kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Uh, when I was working for the fire department, I was um, in fire investigations. So we had to release video and reports as well through IPRA requests. So um, I, I have a little bit of knowledge through our, uh, that side of the house. So I might be able to uh, do a little bit of digging in regards to that uh, topic. Well, I can see Dr. Layton, uh, is, you've certainly piqued her attention and she's uh, brought that issue to the fore. Uh, so, Dr. Layton, might might you get with Mr. Lopez and uh, under Sheriff Corn? Uh, do we have the right person to speak to that from the sheriff's office? If not, can we get them uh, for the next meeting or subsequent meetings? I, I can certainly do that. And uh, just as a quick note, uh, I could I could look at has, having one of our either uh, our EPRA personnel or or maybe somebody from our. Um, Criminal Investigations Division to to speak to that. I I think the uh, the guiding the the guidebook basically uh, it comes from the Attorney General's office as far as IPRBOL information and and some and uh, information that's that's uh, excluded or 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 the exceptions to to what's IPRBOL and uh, as, and so not sometimes some of the same things that are available if you're a 
uh, a plaintiff or somebody involved in a lawsuit, or you're you're going to you're going to have that more information than uh, for say the general public. And and uh, your honor, I, I think I think you're well aware of that as well. But uh, so I, I think I think that wouldn't be a problem having somebody from our our upper office. Uh, to be able to share information. And, and, on, on and under Sheriff Corn, I don't want anybody to be confused. Dr. Layden's concern was, was in a, a public reporting. It wasn't uh, a, a request for inspection of, of uh, public records, but it was what was released to the media. And, and so I, I think it would be fine to have somebody from IPRA address it. But also, I think, uh, and Dr. Layden, before you move away, you might uh, want, want to speak to this a little bit, but I think the concern is beyond that. Do, you know, do, does the evidence get doctored if, if I'm hearing Dr. Layden? And, and if so, is, is there a, an official record uh, that we can access or, or refer back to that, that does give an, an accurate picture? I think we understand the need uh, to, to not let uh, trade secrets out, so to speak, but is, is there an official record for it? So I think that's, am, am I encapsulating that concern, Dr. Layden? Yes, yes you are. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Ms. Mr. Lopez, you're uh, then uh, officially on the committee uh, to, to assist in that effort. And, and Mr. Lopez, I, I, I offer up, uh, yeah myself as a point of contact to, to help facilitate uh, your, your discussions with whoever you might need to discuss with uh, within the sheriff's office. So you could uh, feel free to, to send me an email. I, I should be on some uh, uh, email contacts on, on some of your emails. Sounds good, sir. Thank you. And so, Chair uh, Strong, and I think it's yes. back to you. And and before you close us out, uh, I want to thank you again. I had a little uh, internet difficulty uh, coming into the meeting, and you were well on the way. And so, I ask you to continue in that position, and you continue to be impressive every time you take the gavel. Uh, <laughs> so, expect more, as I will expect more of you. Uh, uh, and, thank and you so much. Sure. Um, I do want to mention that I did catch some of your um, TV appearances, and I think you've done a phenomenal job. Well, thank um, you. So thank you for doing that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think there being no other new business, um, we go to the announcement of the next board meeting scheduled for Friday, June 10th at 11 um, and, and I'm assuming no comments on that. All right, well then um, I guess, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll so move. Make the motion. Second. <laughs> okay, we are adjourned. Oh, or do I have to take a vote? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs>